Hi, my name is Dan Price. I am the creator, co-writer, and artist on Bigfoot Nose Karate. Check me out at BigfootNoseKarate.com or DanOMite139 on Twitter and Instagram. And you are watching Two Geeks Talking. Hi, I'm Casey Allen, co-writer of Bigfoot Nose Karate. And you are listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show. We're going to you the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. Of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today by two returning guests. They have been on the show in the past. In fact, it was almost a year ago today when these two creative and talented people brought to my attention the most epic cryptid karate master of all time, <laughs> Uh, and we are joined by the returning guests of, of course, Dan Price and Casey Allen, creators of Bigfoot Nose Karate. We're talking about book two this time around. How are you guys doing today? Oh, we're good, man. How are you? Doing good, man. Good to be here. It has been a year. You have not stopped your cryptid karate master from exploring the depths of your minds when it comes to this amazing story. For those that don't know anything about yourselves as creative people, Tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking this time around. Hi, my name is Dan Price, and I am the creator, co-writer, and artist on Bigfoot Nose Karate. I am lucky to be working with the man, well, he, you can't see him, he's off camera for you right now, Casey Allen. And Casey, take it away, man. I'm Casey Allen. I am co-writing this with Dan. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Dan is from Austin, Texas. We've been doing comics for a few years. Dan actually has quite a bit more experience than I do, having a blast making this crazy story. So we we can't wait to to tell you guys about it a little bit more. Last year we talked about book one, and we saw the journey of, of course, Bigfoot battling Thulu. Kung Fu Thulu. Kung Fu Thulu. Thank you. The best villain name I've heard in a while. I have to admit. <laughs> What is happening this time around in book two? And actually, what is the title of book two? I forgot to ask. About. Book two uh, is Bigfoot Knows Karate, chapter two, Born Under a Bad Sign. It is the first issue was uh, Bigfoot Knows Karate, Hunter Prey, and that was the theme of the issue. This time around, things are not going good for our boy uh, Bigfoot at this point in the game. Uh, if you read book one, uh, you remember that there was a, he took a big pummeling. Things did not end well for our main Bigfoot there. So he's in a world of hurt. He's surrounded by enemies and things are not looking good for him right now. You know, I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, Kurt. Like we, we were cryptic with you about our cryptid last time. And that will not change because you have read the first issue. Then, you know, there was a, there were a couple of twists and turns along the way, and we want to definitely keep those coming for you guys. But I'm excited for where our guy is coming from. Uh, you know, if you read it, I mean, I guess we can talk. Do we drop his name at this point, Casey? Or do we keep just calling him Bigfoot? You're getting us fresh, yes. Kurt. We, we, this, you're actually like our very first podcast, oh. I think, of this whole of this whole uh, run. So I feel so. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. So we're 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 still learning our our jargon, I guess, right? But I mean, no, if you read the book, what do you think, Casey? Do we just call him by name at this point? Yeah, let's go ahead and just call him by name. Okay. If you fun. read the first issue, you learn that our, our Bigfoot has a name and his name is Benny. And so I only say that because it's easier than, than calling him Benny than just calling him Bigfoot all the time. Benny was always a, uh, a, a lost soul, a, a you know a secluded soul. If you were a Bigfoot and you and never nobody ever saw you, nobody ever interacted with you, nobody knew you existed, how would that affect your psyche? And how would that affect how you live your life? That was a question that we're, we're playing with as we go along. But now that you have this uh, Bigfoot who's no longer, he's not secluded, he's surrounded. And, if, and the question is, what's better, you know, being alone or being surrounded by enemies? And that's where our, where our boy Benny finds himself at this point. It's an amazing um, transition from, from book one to book two. You, you've gone... From the pictures I've seen, and I haven't gotten a chance to, to read uh, too much into it, but I've, I've liked what I've seen because it is a different, it's a more rugged style because you're not, you're not in the forest anymore. It looks like you're in, in an industrial complex of some kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is, uh, I, I showed him a couple of pages before you got on case, nice. so just so you know. Yeah. And so he is, he's in a different environment completely. 
And whereas he was running free and loose in the in the in the wilderness, now it's cold steel. Now it's it's uh, enclosures everywhere. It, it, that's got to be a wild feeling for a creature that is to exist in the wilderness, to be by himself, to be all alone, to now be in an environment that's just completely, that'd be like living in uh, in the outback your entire life. And somebody one day says to you, here, here's a Coca-Cola, try this out. You never had one before. You know what I mean? To be so secluded. And then all of a sudden you're put in this kind of situation. Actually, I have a better analogy. Good, so I didn't like mine. Good. In, in the seminal uh, 1991 uh, television series, Beverly Hills 90210, oh the, the Walsh family moves from Minneapolis, Minnesota, all the way to Beverly Hills. And this is really the driving force of, of the angst. A lot of the storyline, just that fish out of water tail, the heartbeat of that just beats throughout the entire production, as is... With this comic series, Benny has been forced from his his forest enclave of uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, to the the futuristic Beverly Hills 90210. Really, this is just basically an excuse for us to uh, get Aaron Spelling's daughter some some work at at the end of the day. Because that that is one thing I did notice. The title page was you have not one but two characters as well too can you talk about the the secondary character or is that still a mystery so i'm going to tread light lightly here you have a little bit of foreknowledge of of her already from book one but not in the way that you would think i'm gonna leave it at that yeah mysteries abound you know she's from 90211 okay <laughs> is the thing and <laughs> the other side you of know, the tracks Last campaign, it was all the traveling pants and the Yaya sisterhood. This year, are we doing? Are we doing Aaron Spelling shows this year? So <laughs> next, next, next Might year, we're talking Might Melrose be. Place. I mean, Twin Peaks was like ostensibly also an Aaron Spelling production. So okay, stop that right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't 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 disparage Twin Peaks. The character that you've seen in the artwork that we posted recently that was done by uh, Zip Alegria, who was doing a variant cover for the book. Yeah, she is going to remain a mystery to you guys right now. Like uh, Casey said, that we we dipped the toe in the water in issue one uh, with the character, kind of not really. We'll leave it at that, but get excited because there's going to be a lot of cool things happening with that character. Very excited to bring that element to Benny. See how that camaraderie or not so much, you know, works out. You have a, such a solid story in, in book one. You, if I recall correctly from, from our last chat, you have five issues you're working on or maybe up to six. I, I can't, couldn't recall how, what's your total? Five issues in the main arc. Yeah. Okay. So five issues. Yeah. So, so you have an overall end goal to this entire storyline. Why... Was book two important to, it seems like, ramp up the action? And Casey, jump in during this at any point, okay? No, seriously, I think of this, you know, I mean, this. there's a lot to unfold in this issue. Not only we wanted to bring more action and more uh, characters and things like that, but with action and characters comes story mm -hmm. and comes history. And we have to unfold the story out to you in, in a way that will that will make sense, that will give you enough story and ask enough questions along as we go. I think there's a lot of exposition in the story in a, in a good way. You know, I mean, like, I think that we're learning, not being told what's going on, but we're learning the characters and learning their motivations. While Benny is title character on the book, I mean, absolutely, he's got a lot of company and not much of it is happy to see him. That's a problem. <laughs> That's a big problem in a big way. In Issue one, it starts off freaking huge. And uh, I mean, you, you literally have a, a several story Cthulhu beating the crap out of our title character. And issue two, where do you go after that? Like, are you are you going to keep getting bigger and bigger? Because eventually that's going to like top out. Like, it, what are you going to do? So you have to find new ways to beat his ass. And um, one rule that that Dan and I have for this story is like, if he gets hit, he stays hit. Like he's going to take a beating because it, I always thought it was lame when the Hulk gets punched like 10 times and he gets back up and he's still Hulk smash. 
there's damage that's done. You have to, to show that. You have to respect your reader in that way. So in, in this issue, we, we wanted to keep the action up, not because we feel beholden to like, well, the, the kids want this, but we want to keep up the momentum that, that we set in issue one. But also we have a really good story we're dying to get out to you. So we're making a, you know, a action story sandwich. It's delicious sandwich. It's really, it's really good and filling. You know, you're one of extra the, pickles on this bad boy. Oh yeah, uh, Clawson. The thing about it is, is that you're going to get that when we wrote the story initially, you know, the big driving force behind this was to not be trite or to tread in paths. This type of story could naturally go down. You know, I think we've talked about it a lot on previous podcasts. You know, uh, when we were promoting the first book, we didn't want to do the, you know, the the Karate Kid story where the kid gets his ass kicked and then the master has to train him up, and then maybe something happens to the master and that's revenge. You know, and you got to go get the revenge story. How you can't have revenge on a character that didn't have anything to lose in the first place. He's a freaking Bigfoot. If you want to tell that kind of story, you have to learn about the characters. You have to grow the character, and that's what we're doing right now. To not do that trite idea, we really work our tails off trying to come up with something that was that you wouldn't see coming, that you that you wouldn't think that this is what a Bigfoot would be experiencing and the role that he plays in a much larger plot. So I'm excited about it. It's funny because we have, you know, everything plotted out through the five issues, right? We know exactly what's happening, which Easter eggs to drop here or there, that kind of thing that we're going to not Easter eggs, but like breadcrumb that we're going to need for later. It's really funny because there's going to be things that happen in book four that you're going to turn around and go, oh my God, that thing in book one, that was important, you know, and uh, it's nice to know that we're going to be able to tell that kind of story and make people work for it a little bit. This isn't just uh, a linear storyline, you know, the, not that we're like traveling through time or something like that, but there's a lot happening and I'm excited for, oh my God, Kurt, you have no idea. Casey's a gem. Have I told you that? Because he, he's come up with a humdinger on this one, dude. He really has. You've gone from from the natural forest to industrial. Obviously, themes are changing then in that regard, especially for this type of story. You know, what are what are some of the themes that Casey and you have worked on that are going to really entice the readers this time around? We've had a lot of fun with through both issues. Benny doesn't really talk a lot, and that's kind of by design. We wanted him to be a you know, just like a strong, silent type for the most part. And, and in issue one, he, he physically cannot speak. So a lot of the stuff you find out about Benny is through the mouths of the other characters. It kind of informs you as to who he is. So pay attention as, as it goes, because there, there's really some, some crazy stuff happening that ultimately is going to pay off later on in the series. We have a lot of the idea of isolation, the idea of, of forced isolation, even ultimately just kind of learning how to rejoin the world in a way. It's going to be an interesting ride. I don't want to give away too much. You know, one of the things that I really loved uh, in the, the book Sin City was, uh, and the first one, the, the Hard Goodbye, you saw the story through Marv's eyes. Marv was your, was your protagonist. You knew of the story. You knew through Marv completely. So his word was gospel. And then A Dame to Kill For came out. And that was told through a guy named Dwight's eyes. Well, Marv and Dwight, Inter intersect with each other through the two storylines, uh, through the two stories. And when Marv's story moves through Dwight's story, you get to see Marv through Dwight's eyes. And it was incredible to me because while I, you never really took, you know, Marv to be somebody who's on top of their game and really has everything all figured out, it was amazing to see how somebody who saw him subjectively uh, through their own perspective. And we're getting a little bit of that in this book, you know, which is, which is cool. You know, the people who have uh, taken Benny, they don't see him the way that we see Benny from our first venture with him. That's an interesting thing that we're getting to play with there. And what is his role in all in the world? Casey mentioned that he has to uh, find his way in the world. I mean, where, what is he? The big question that we're asking throughout this entire thing is why? Why is this happening? And, you know, and who is he? And we get to play with that over the course of these next few issues. Again, I'm excited. We're not going to tell you too much. I mean, you know, I, I feel like we're repeating that at the end of everything we say uh, in this in this issue so far or in this uh, episode so far. One, one thing when, when I think about Benny is like, it's not like, who is Benny? It's 
what is Benny, that's going to be a, a larger aspect of the story. What function does he serve? Who does he serve? I think it's going to throw people for a loop in a good way. It's one of those things where we're not going to spell it out right away. You're going to figure it out at the, at the end. It's all going to make sense. But until then, enjoy some monster fights. And then we met a character in the first issue, too, uh, named Grisha. We, we only got his name one time in the first issue. Uh, and we get to really get to, get to know Grisha and who Grisha, who Grisha serves himself, what his role in everything is. You know, we saw a couple of extra characters pop in at the end of the last issue. And so we get to definitely explore those characters. It was Grisha and there was another character named Reynolds that showed up in the end of the first issue. And so we'll get to talk through those characters. We'll get to see how they play out in this as well and who else they're, they're involved with. It's a wider world for sure. Funny because we started with like a, a single picture of a bunny in the first <laughs> on the first page of the first issue. It's kind of blown up much larger than initially the initial scale uh, set out to be, uh, at least from the reader's perspective. We, we knew where we were going, but it's cool. <laughs> Looking at the transition from book one to book two here, what are three things that you are both proud of with this book? book finally being created and what are three things you're looking forward to in issue three Ooh, that's a good one okay so in issue three excuse me in issue two one thing i'm proud of is i i was worried that coming off of such a massive battle in issue one where you have this you know big massive cthulhu guy uh he's got quips you know, uh, one, of, one of my favorite dick and or fart jokes is uttered by that character. Going from that and going, okay, we're, we're done with that character for now. Let's go here. And in fact, we're going to change the setting entirely. I think we nailed it. And not only that, Dan freaking killed the character designs on these new people that we're doing. We have a new set of badasses to contend with. We're taking the story in an area that at the end of book one, you kind of get an idea of what's going on. Uh, I think we're making it a lot more interesting than just to punch them up. So that's, you know, the three things that I'm proud of. We, we got going from such a big fight to different setting entirely. It's not a punch them up and we're actually telling a good story. And then uh, the third one, I forgot what the third one was, but I'm proud of it. And then going forward, what I'm really, really excited about just being able to introduce some of the new characters. No, no, uh, I'm, I'm really excited as to being able to showcase like the, the wider world that we're, we're seeing. Um, and then also like literally when I write and, and discuss the book, I'm usually walking in my yard with my dog. I'll walk through the woods and these long, long jaunts and I'm like, Hey Dan, I'm going to go ahead and just spoil a little something just because it's not, not nothing huge. I'm like, can we fight a Minotaur? Dan's like, fuck yeah, we can fight a Minotaur. <laughs> so, and then Dan comes up with this Minotaur design, this badass, and it all falls in line through the greater threads of the story. So little things like that, it's so fun to, to kind of showcase. And also like knowing just kind of how weird we get with it. Like I, I love getting weird with it, dude. And we're going to get weird with it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Now, if you had really gotten weird with it, there'd be uh, Venus flytraps all over that Minotaur. <laughs> but uh, that, was, that was a point of contention for a little that while. Was a, so here's the thing: in the first book, uh, Casey wanted to give the uh, give the Cthulhu an affectation where he couldn't breathe, so he was running around going throughout the whole book. I thought it was ridiculous. it down. In this issue, he fights a Minotaur. Yeah, that's one of the creatures that are involved in the book. But I wanted to have the Minotaur covered in symbiotic Venus flytraps, like man-eating Venus flytraps. Casey was not excited about this one bit for, and we talked about it for a long time. Finally, I acquiesced. So, all right. So we're one for one, Casey. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. I get to win the next weird thing of battle next next time around. Okay. <laughs> I was going to ask, you know, what's the next uh, point of contention for Rocky Three? I mean, for issue three. <laughs> <laughs> Rocky Three. That would be so badass. The Bigfoot fought Clubber Lang in uh, in number uh, in, in the third issue. That's not going to happen. But man, wouldn't it have been cool? All right, he comes out in Apollo's drawers. You yeah. know what I mean? And like he's ready to go. Yeah. His clothes got ripped off when he in the first issue so i mean he might find a big massive pair of trunks who knows yeah i mean that'd be amazing yeah i just rewatched 
almost all of the Rocky movies recently, right. and uh, and the Creed movies too. Like when I was we're Creed was so good. Ago. Creed was great. I you know I, yeah, but I did skip Rocky three and Rocky four. I really did. I honestly skip both of those just because they're so ridiculous that it was like. <laughs> That I but I, and five is terrible, but five fits in line with the other ones better than you know. I'm going to Russia to go stop you know to go stop the Cold War. Uh, you know that, <laughs> that that's a lot of that's a lot of weight on the shoulders of a uh, of the Southpaw from Philly. I'm just saying. Which was the one with the robot? I wanted that robot so. Bad. That was Rocky Four. Yeah, the yeah, Rocky. Yeah, yeah, yeah the one that, that that Polly basically turns into his slave. Yes, that robot was fantastic. It's my girlfriend, you know, or whatever he <laughs> said, you know. <laughs> Anyway, but no, but back to Bigfoot Knows Karate, uh, but because you said Rocky Three, and then you got me going, Kurt. Yeah, Sorry, it's my fault. But... You know what I'm looking forward to in issue three uh, is very dependent on what happens in issue two. But it will be neat to see the character grow more from the experiences that he's having, and to learn uh, bits and pieces about the character uh, getting revealed back to him. Yeah, I'm excited for issue three as well because. If you're a Jack Kerouac fan, you'll you'll find a, a little bit of joy in the the third issue. Actually, not that we are actually putting any Easter eggs in there. It's just a thematic thing. I, I don't want to give anything away, but in issue three, we're going to meet another character that is loosely based on somebody else. He's a real bastard. I'm excited to get to that person and then uh, see where where that road. I mean, we know where it takes us, but like take you guys through that journey because it's going to be fun. You know, it's the journey itself is interesting because you know, you both know the end goal, the end result of this. And and I'm glad that we're able to, to follow along with it on an issue by issue basis. But what is your overall creative end goal for this realistically from a duo that you both are with this series? Because it's great that you're putting this story together, but what is your ultimate creative end goal? Matching yachts. Creative end goal for this, like, is literally just just writing the story that we we wanted to tell. The whole, like, seed of this story just grew from a picture that Dan drew on, and he posted to Instagram. And it looked cool as hell. And I was like, there's a story there. We Like, you need to tell that story going from you know from that first bit of inspiration and just seeing it through i love that i love being able to take this little seed that dan planted you know like three years ago maybe even longer than that and just fucking growing a big ass tree with it tree filled with money (laughs) what's the end goal um i mean look I, I'd, I'd be lying if I didn't say to you that, you know, the the anim- the 10 part animated uh, show on uh, some sort of streaming service wouldn't be the end goal for what we would do with the five issues that we're putting together now. That would that's totally where I see this, where, where, where I see it needing to go, because I love comics. I love indie comics. I mean, that's why we're here. Right. That's why Casey's here. That's why you're here. Kurt. We like it. You know, we just we live and breathe them. But um, I think the character has an audience that is further past, you know, people reading indies. And I'd love for people to get a chance to experience Bigfoot Nose Karate on a, on a larger level. Will that happen? Who knows? But, you know, that's the goal that we're going to, you know, that I'm working towards. Casey, I'm sure you're down with that. You want matching yachts, you said, right? Well, yeah, yeah. It's not going ha- to happen an issue at a time at the an Artist Alley, pals. We got to go make this, uh, this streaming thing happen. Okay. So. We need to be the new Eastman and Laird. One of us needs to wear sunglasses everywhere and, and marry a supermodel slash um adult film star start up a comic set. There, there you go yeah so you can marry the the adult film I'll just star. Go i'm gonna wear the sunglasses yeah. so Let's i'll t- wear the sunglasses and you can uh you can, you can my wife that. might have a big problem with that yeah well I, I my wife too so this is your burden to bear pal i got the sunglasses dibs you know i mean <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's, it's recorded here. So yeah. yeah, see the thumb thumb master down. No, no, none of that. There we go. Sunglasses. It's all on you, pal. Of course, you have a Kickstarter campaign coming up. Yes. That that is the the main goal. And it's great to see that you're doing this one for each book, and it's it's a necessary thing, obviously, to get this off the ground. Uh, what has changed from the last campaign to this campaign? And by the way, when is the, sorry? When is the campaign starting? And October twelfth. October twelfth. We're going to do a, a live launch party uh, starting at six thirty that night. We're going to actually be joined by uh, 
Chris uh, Michael from Homebrew Comics, who's going to be launching his book at the exact same time as well, that same evening. So we're going to do a live launch party. And so that'll be a lot of fun. We did that last time on the last campaign, and I think that worked out pretty well for us, Case. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had a, we had a small goal that we were asking for of a thousand dollars. We did the uh, we did the live launch party. We ended up having two hundred people watch the live the live launch that night, and uh, we raised our goal in seven minutes, which was awesome. And uh, we had you know, and it went on to have a really great campaign. Uh, so for this one, you know, we're uh, we're gonna we're gonna launch with Chris and uh, uh, his book Crit, and so that'll be a lot of fun. We have a contest that's about, that's being announced right now that is uh, a notification contest. If you go to the notification page, take a screenshot that you've hit the button and send DM me, you're gonna be entered to be able to win uh, a Big, Bigfoot Nose Karate uh, prize pack. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sign comic and, you know, do uh, you know some stickers, print, things like that. Uh, so, you know, just to get in there early. Another thing that we're doing on this campaign that's cool is uh, Luis Tomas has uh, donated a, an amazing piece of artwork. Uh, uh, Bigfoot Nose Karate that uh, we're going to raffle for the first 100 backers. You will show off the artwork uh, coming up soon. Y'all be able to get a chance to look at that. And uh, so, yeah, those, those are a couple of fun things we have building up to the, uh, to the actual campaign. The books itself or the campaign itself, we had a lot of fun with the director's commentary last issue. So I believe we're going to be doing that again this issue. Okay, Shep, for another one of those? I am. It, that, yeah. we, had, we really did have a good time with that. It was fun. Uh, and And just being able to see the book through somebody else's eyes. Cause we, we had a few of our friends on who had read the book and uh, the little things that they had picked up and mm -hmm. noticed was re really kind of fun to uh, just kind of hear it through somebody else. We'll do a deluxe edition again, this issue, which was a lot of fun last issue. So that had the director's commentary in it had some art gallery stuff in there. And we're going to do a variation on the art gallery this time around uh, that I think people will find interesting. We'll do the regular edition comic, which will be, we're sitting at about 34 pages right now on the story that, you know, 36 page book with including the ads and that kind of thing. So 34 page story uh, around there, right, Casey? Because we're finishing yeah. it out right now. So uh, we're still working away. Uh, we were just talking out, can we finish this in 33 or 34? We were having this discussion like, what, two days ago? Yeah, uh, yeah. So, and then we'll do the deluxe edition. We'll, we'll, we'll have the expanded pages, um, the expanded artwork and that sort of thing in there in the director's commentary. We've got some great covers this go around. Uh, Jeb and Loop, <laughs> Zip Alegria, which is the piece that you already saw, Kurt, with, uh, the, uh, with the mysterious lady uh, firing off some rounds on there. And then Adam Caswell is coming back to do uh, a cover this go around as well. And that one is actually a wraparound cover. So that is going it's, to be pretty exciting. It's baller. It's it nuts. is baller. Right. Yes, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, man. It's, it's So we've got some cool stuff lined up for you guys on this one. Well, I'm excited for it. I, I'm, I'm excited for the transition to this new area. I'm excited for the, the expansion of, of beloved characters and new characters be they ally or villains you know i can't wait to see what else you have in store especially with issue three but i i think it's just a wonderful journey that you're both bringing to the masses and to the independent comic scene as well too. keep it going and and i think it's an amazing uh experience for everyone that gets to to share it and read it thank you so much for having us to talk about it and you know and tell our tale and, uh, you know, we're really looking forward to uh, seeing what y'all think. I mean, that was the scary part the last time, you know, I mean, we, we kept it so guarded. People were laughing at us like, ah, you know, oh, yeah, the big, the big fight em up book. You know, that's what they were expecting. And then we get the calls after the book came out and they're like, oh, we did not see it going that way. You know, so we want to. It's not everything's always going to be some gigantic, you know, cliffhanger every single issue or something like that. But we want to be able to drop enough uh, interesting stuff each issue that we're like, OK, didn't see that going to happen. Yeah, didn't see that happening. So it's pretty cool. Earlier, you talked about um, just like the difference between issue one and setting and issue two. I think that's going to kind of be an ongoing thing throughout the series in a way. It's kind of by design. It's always like throughout the entire story that we're telling, we have crazy things planned for this character. He's really gonna be in that sisterhood of traveling pants by the end of it. So I mean, he's never seen the Godfather, Kurt. I just want to point that out. 
Casey, yeah, you I mean, have homework. <laughs> <laughs> I've been actually going through um, like noir movies lately. So I watched the Maltese Falcon the other day. And I, how about this? He's going to be uh, Elwood to uh, the mystery ladies. Uh, Jake. His name is Jake. Jake. Yes. Yeah, expect uh, the equivalent to a bunch of car crashes. Uh, maybe we'll have some blues icons sing some songs midway through. Okay, and now that's uh, awesome. Carrie Fisher makes an appearance. That's all. Okay, now you're speaking my language. 80s Carrie Fisher, and it's like, wow. Okay. Whoa. 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 Wow. Uh, hey, I do hate to say, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You know, before I let you both, and thank you both so much for coming on the show. I, I do want to thank you. Uh, we, thank you for having We always us. have a blast. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Before I let you both go, where can we find you? How can we support you? And of course, how can we support um, the Bigfoot Nose Karate book two or issue two on, on Kickstarter? So the easiest way to do that would be all the good links that you need or you can be found at BigfootNoseKarate.com. Uh, you will be able to find the link to the uh, Kickstarter for uh, chapter two, uh, born under a bad sign you'll be able to find our social media links both casey and mine's uh i'm dano might 139 on instagram and twitter he's robots eat guitar on instagram and twitter and uh you know that's the best way to find us but bigfootnosekarate.com you can find the kickstarter link like i said and get over there go click that link uh hit the notify button and get get a uh, get entered into the raffle that we're going to be doing on October 12th, live on Instagram. Also, check out the Comic Gam. Uh, we're on Twitter. We're on um, Instagram. It's how Dan and I met. We do one-page comics every week. We pair up-and-coming writers and artists, give them time to make a comic together on a theme that we all kind of vote together to choose. It's a fun community. It's uh, strictly no assholes. That That's the biggest criteria we have after that. It's just people who love to make comics. That's where we're coming from. So if you want to learn more about it, message me it's fun well like i said i do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of two geeks talking you can of course find this interview and a thousand plus others literally on our website tgtmedia.com or two geeks talking.com it's the word to not the number two and of course on our youtube channel which is still a lot more updated than our website because i am still only one person doing all this shit oh my god youtube.com forward slash c forward slash tgt media and of course on our patreon because that's really more important now than ever because uh, we have to keep the lights on on this show. 15 years of this, uh, providing talented and amazing people a platform to talk about their works like Casey and Dan here today, which is patreon.com forward slash TGT media. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening, watching on Two Geeks Talking. <laughs>